Sarah Hinton, and I am a graduate student in Volcanology and Experimental Petrology for the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and I work for the Alaska Volcano Observatory. The Cascades are a mountain range in the Pacific Northwest of the United States, and they run roughly from Northern California up into Southern Canada. And they're a mixture of volcanic and non-volcanic peaks, although the main peaks in the chain are volcanoes, of which there are 13, and seven of those have been active in the last 200 years. Of the 13 volcanoes, the really sort of notable ones are Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier. The Earth is made up of a number of different layers, so in the centre we have a liquid core, which is made primarily of iron. And then around that core we have what we call the mantle, which is solid rock. It behaves as a liquid because it's very, very hot, but it's actually a solid. And on top of this we have these cool, rigid plates of material, and this is what we call the tectonic plate, and it's kind of like an eggshell on the outside of an egg. The Cascades are formed or were formed and are being formed today by the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate, which is sliding underneath the North American plate at about three to four centimeters a year. Mount St. Helens is important because of the eruption in 1980, and it was the first eruption in the continental United States since 1914. It wasn't a particularly big eruption as global eruptions go, but it was important partly because it was in America, and there's not many eruptions in the continental United States, and partly because a number of people were killed, so it really raised awareness about volcanology. Mount Rainier is very important. It hasn't it's erupted within the last 200 years, but it hasn't had a major eruption. But it will likely have a major eruption sometime in the near geological future, possibly in the next one or 200 years. And it is an incredibly dangerous volcano, which is very close to um, Seattle and Tacoma, and could potentially be devastating for millions and millions of people. People knew from very early on that the Cascades were volcanic, they'd recognise that. But as I said, 1914 was the last time any activity had been observed in the Cascades, until 1980 when uh, Mount St. Helens became active again. And what happened at Mount St. Helens was that magma began to rise towards the surface. And for some reason, which we don't really know, it pooled within the edifice itself, and it caused a huge dome on the side of the volcano, which we call a cryptodome. At 8.32 a.m. on the 18th of May, 1980, there was a 5.2 magnitude earthquake below the volcano. And basically, this really just shook things up, and it caused what we call a flank collapse. And basically, there was a huge landslide that went down the side of the volcano. And when it did this, all this fresh magma in the cryptodome was suddenly exposed, and this caused a major decompression below the volcano, resulting in a, a huge eruption for the cascade. Most importantly, 57 people were killed, and this included a USGS volcanologist, David Johnston. He was part of the monitoring effort, he was up on the side of the volcano, he was the first one to know that it was erupting, and he called the eruption into home base, which was in Vancouver, Washington, and the last words ever from him were, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it, and he was killed a few seconds later. And they never found his body, although his trailer was found in 1993, buried in a pyroclastic flow. Um, but in addition to him and 56 other people, 250 homes, 47 bridges, 15 miles worth of railway, 185 miles worth of highway, they were all destroyed. Basically a 600 square kilometre area was completely devastated by the blast. Pyroclastic flow is a hot, fast-moving cloud of air and rock and it can be several hundred degrees in centigrade, and it can be moving at several hundred miles an hour. Basically, everything in the path of a pyroclastic flow will be utterly destroyed. It'll just bulldozer trees. Uh, a lot of what you saw at Mount St. Helens with the actual way you can now see the trees that were fallen over aren't necessarily from a pyroclastic flow, um, which would have burnt them. They're from the pressure wave 
which resulted from the eruption as well, which would have been very significant. If an eruption occurred today, the first thing that we would do is raise the alert level on the volcano. And by raising the alert level, we allow for things like notification to the airlines. It allows state and local authorities to call states of emergency, which gives them extra powers in terms of evacuating people and putting extra boots on the ground to try and help people get out safely. The Cascades are very seasonally popular. They're they have a lot of tourists in them in the summer. If something happened during the summer, a lot more people would be killed. The Cascades are probably the most heavily monitored volcanoes on the planet. It's very unlikely that an eruption there would occur without us or without the scientific community being able to give warning. But that warning would probably be in terms of months and weeks rather than days and hours.